Okay, so today we are talking about annotating. So I have made a video on how I annotate books, but that's two years old. I have a few updates and I can show you some updated uh, annotations that I've done as well. So I figured we would talk about annotating today because I annotate my books. I love writing in my books and uh, I get a lot of questions on it. So We'll make a video, we'll chat, we'll talk about annotations a little bit. But before we do, a sponsored unboxing. So Book of the Month is a subscription that helps people to discover the best new release, early release, and debut adult fiction books. They offer five new release books every month and members get to pick one to be shipped to their door or if they want more. In addition to one of their featured boxes, members can add up to two featured books, trending books, or previous books as add-ons to their monthly purchase. And members get to skip a month anytime they want with no penalty. And Book of the Month has recently updated that when you sign up for Book of the Month, you can sign up for any of the monthly books, including the add-ons. For this month's selection, we have The Collective, No Killer Goes Unpunished, where the reader plums into the dark side of justice and the depths of diabolical revenge in this psychological suspense. A Little Hope, a luminous, life-affirming novel set in an idyllic Connecticut town over the course of a year. Following the intertwining lives of a dozen neighbors as they confront everyday desires and fears, a lost love, a stalled career, an illness, and a betrayal. The Family, two daughters, two families, one inescapable fate. A sweeping saga that offers a fresh take on old New York, the American dream, and what it means to inherit the wounds of past generations. The Keeper of Night, half British Reaper, half Japanese Shinigami. Rin Scarborough has been collecting souls in the London streets for centuries. When her future to control her developing Shinigami abilities drives Ren out of London, she flees to Japan in search of the acceptance she's never gotten from her fellow Reapers. This one interests me so much. How to marry Keanu Reeves in 90 days. Dear Keanu, you don't know me, but I'm about to ruin your wedding. Bethany is supposed to be getting her life together, but when news breaks that Keanu is getting married in 90 days, Lou has no choice but to drop everything and persuade him to marry her, or at least cancel the wedding to keep alive the hopes and dreams of so many others. And of course, they have plenty of add-ons. The two that they sent this month is My Body and Will, but there are a plethora of add-ons to choose from. So head over to bookofthemonth.com to get your first books, and your first month is only $9.99 with the code, which will be linked in the description of this video. Now into discussing annotations. I'm I'm gonna try to keep this brief because I feel like it's not a very exhaustive topic. So I feel like I can, let's just do it. Uh, probably the main question that I get a lot from people about annotations is what do I write? <laughs> and the answer is everything, I write everything. Um, there are books, I there are a lot of books that I read that have, especially when they have beautiful prose, the way things are written a lot of times just really pack a punch and they're, it feels like nuggets that I get to chew on. It feels like something that I want to kind of sit on and think about for a little while. So when I come across something like that that kind of just hits me a little bit differently, I'll underline it. And um, a lot of times I'll also take that quote and, well, okay, that's a lie. What I'd like to be is someday someone who takes a quote from a book that's really meaningful to me and put it in a notebook and just have a notebook of my favorite quotes. I haven't become that person yet, but I have planned to for like three years now. But I do very, very often actually, I do flip through some of the books that I annotated that have been really meaningful to me. Things My Son Needs to Know About the World is a nonfiction that Frederick Bachman wrote. It's a series of letters that he wrote to his son, but he published it and it's very relatable to parents in general. And as I was reading this book, this book is absolutely loaded with my annotations and a couple of my son's drawings. But because this is a series of letters, um, I have starred the ones that were the most impactful to me and I've underlined some of the sections that were really, really important to me. This is a nonfiction that at times I was reading and I was thinking, what's wrong with you, old man? What are you on about? <laughs> and then there were times that I was reading and I was crying. There were even sections that I read to Corey that even getting it out of context, he cried too, because it was just, it's just, Bachman has a way of really just capturing 
what goes on in a person's head and heart. And this is a book that I've flipped through several times. I don't need to read the entire book over and over again, though I will reread the entire book eventually, but there are times when, I don't know, it feels like the right time for me to just go back and and read some of this stuff again. It feels like the right time for me to go back and kind of feel those emotions or kind of get the camaraderie and understanding of another parent that knows how to express the things that I can't. And having those annotations in here makes it really easy for me when I need that to go back and quickly find the passages that I want, as well as I was talking to my sister-in-law not that long ago and, uh, I was telling her about this book and I just grabbed the book off my shelf, flipped through it, quickly found some passages that were really meaningful to me and I read them to her. And it's just a way to really, when an author can say something that you can't quite, it's a way to be able to constantly come back to that as well as be able to share it with people a lot more conveniently. And I really appreciate that. Anyway, that was already off track. Good job, Murph. You're very structured. Good YouTuber. What do I write? I write everything. I underline impactful lines. I respond to things. If, if it's something that's really hit me hard, then I'll write out my emotions in the margins of what I've just read. If it's not something impactful and it's something exciting or thrilling or, or if it's theory fodder, then I write out my theories. I, I react on the page with a exclamation or with um, a freak out or with me writing out my theories, me drawing connections. Sometimes I'll underline something that seems significant to me in a fantasy novel, and then I'll keep reading, and several chapters later, I'll say, aha, I remember there was something about this before, and I can quickly flip back, find the thing I underlined, and, and look back at where I am now, and I can flip back between those two passages so easily, so I'm seeing the author's connections. I'm seeing the seeds that the author is laying so easily. And then I can even, I even do reference points where I'm like, go back to page 36, and you know, which I'm only writing to myself, so why? I don't know, it just makes it more interactive, more immersive, more exciting for me. Um, if I hate a book, I trash it in my annotations. If I don't like something, I rip into it it. And then what am I supposed to do with a book that I hated? Well, if my annotations are funny, then I keep it on my shelf. If I don't want it on my shelf anymore, I'll usually send it to a friend that'll appreciate the ranting. I think that annotating books makes it more fun on reread. I'm a big rereader. I love rereading my favorite stories over and over and over again. And when I'm first experiencing a book, I'm giving my first reactions, my first thoughts, my first theories, my first emotions. I'm putting it all on the page. And when I reread, that's immortalized. Like, that's just there. So when I come back to my favorite stories and all my first reactions are there, it's like, it's like I'm reading with my past self, as weird and cheesy as that sounds. It's like I'm going back to the first time I read the book and I'm re-experiencing all those initial emotions again, but on reread, I get all those initial moments, but I also get all the stuff that I gain from, from seeing the series from this end of it, you know, being able to pick up on all the foreshadowing and seeing all those moments so I can add more annotations, noticing the seeds that were laid that I missed the first time while still getting all those initial first time reading emotions. It's just, it's great when it works out that way that it's a new favorite that you've annotated. I also think that annotating makes it more fun to share my books. I love sharing my books. I love letting people borrow my books because I love helping people find awesome books to read. I love recommending books to people who doesn't. I love helping people figure out what they're gonna read next. And if I can physically put the book in their hands for them to read it, not only is that just so much more personal and then they want to come back to me and tell me what they thought of the book, but then also it's kind of like a guilt trip. If I put the book in their hands, they have to read it, right? I'm kidding, sort of. I, I think that it's a lot more fun when I can hand someone a book that I've put myself into because then when they're reading it, not only are they reading the book, but they're reading with me in a sense. And if it's really fun if they're willing to put their annotations in there too, if they're willing to respond to what I wrote, if they're willing to uh, interact with me on page. And then once they hand the book back to me, I can read through their annotations, I can read through my annotations. It's like I'm experiencing the book in a whole new way through a whole new set of eyes. And it's so 
fun. I use a lot of tabs in my books sometimes, and a lot of times I get questions about what do the tabs mean or what uh, what's your color coding system. And the answer is nothing and nothing. If I underline something, it gets tabbed. If I write a note somewhere, it gets tabbed. Even if I just write a huge exclamation point as my reaction to something, which usually my reactions are a little bit more meaningful than that, it still gets a tab because if there's any scene that has been meaningful to me in any way, I may want to go back to it someday. If the book is tabbed up, it's super easy for me to just very quickly flip through every annotation and find something very, very fast. If it's not, it's annotated, but it's not tabbed. I've got loads of notes in this thing, but it, I have to flip through every page to get to them. I don't have any color coding system. I just use a pattern. These particular tabs come in four colors, so I just rotate colors and it's pretty. And that's the end of that. And then there are a lot of books that I annotate that I don't end up tabbing genuinely just out of laziness. And, uh, and then I always tell myself I'll go back and tab them up later, but I never do. It's not a perfect system. Um, I don't annotate everything that I read, but uh, if it feels like it's gonna be a book that I love, either because it's by an author that I already know and trust, or just the concept excites me to the extent that I think this could potentially be a new favorite or could potentially be a book that I'm going to really love, I'm gonna annotate it. Um, if it's something that I start hating on an extreme level, it'll be annotated. If I feel like this is a book that will invoke a lot of emotion out of me, it will be annotated. If it's a book that I end up not really having strong feelings about, it's probably not been annotated. That's usually something that I can catch early on, and if I don't catch it early on, I don't mind starting annotations halfway through a book. It's not ideal, but it's better than not annotating it at all. But there are problems with the system. There are definitely times where I think a book is gonna be a hit and it's not, and it's not even a rage, it's just fine. And it's a book that I wouldn't keep on my shelves. I would donate it after I'm done reading it, but I can't because I've annotated it. Now, I usually annotate in pencil, so if I've only left two or three notes and then I dropped off because I realized that I'm not loving the book, then I can just erase those. I can still donate it, but, um, you know, there are books that have been undonatable, and that's unfortunate. But honestly, I get so much out of annotating my books that the few books that end up suffering because of it is well worth it to me, because for me, when I'm annotating, I feel like I'm so much more deeply immersed in the story. Yes, it does take longer to read a book if you're annotating because you're constantly getting to a big moment and then stopping to react on page. But honestly, it doesn't take that long to write your reactions or theories out. It's not that big of a deal. And me putting all of my emotions onto the page, not only does it make me pause and reflect on what's happening and pause and reflect on my feelings for the book a lot more, and so I feel like I'm feeling things a lot more, but also I feel like I retain it more when I annotate, which I know there have been studies that say that underlining and annotating don't actually help your retention at all. I don't care what those studies say. I feel like I'm retaining it a lot better when I'm interacting with the story. So not only that, but also, I don't know, it's just, it's it's such an enjoyable experience for me to be able to get out all of my emotions in the moment. Plus, I don't know, I hope my kids will fall in love with reading too. They don't have to be obsessive about it like I am, but I hope that they love it. And I hope that when they're getting into books and when they're falling in love with reading, I hope that I can put books in their hands that I've put a piece of myself into that as they're falling in love with reading, they're getting a piece of myself in, in their books. They're getting to see my reactions and my experiences. And maybe that'll draw them into the story more because it's like they're reading it with me or getting to know me a little bit better through the books that I've responded to. I really love the idea of being able to pass this stuff on either to my friends or to my kids someday and, and they get to experience the stories with a piece of me, if that's something they would like to do. I know that growing up, if my parents had favorite books, even if they only had two or three favorite books that they had put a piece of themselves in and then they put that in my hands, 
that would have been so meaningful to me. And I would love to be able to do that for my kids. And there are a lot of books that I read and I, I'm writing in and I'm putting myself into and I'm thinking about my kids and I'm thinking about how excited I am to put this in their hands someday. Let's get back on track. One other thing that I really love doing that I've only just started doing is when I finish a chapter, I write myself a little bullet point list of things that have happened in that chapter. Plot points that have happened, happened char significant character moments, connections I'm making. I just write myself a quick bullet points of things going on in the chapter. Now, this new addition to my annotation structure does add more time because now I'm not just reacting to moments really quickly. Now I'm actually taking time to summarize quick bullet point summaries, but still every single chapter, which does add to my reading time. But anyway, I really enjoy doing this because again, I feel like I'm retaining the story better if I'm making myself these bullet point notes at the end of each chapter. It's like I'm stopping at the end of a chapter and really reflecting on what the author has communicated to me, which makes me feel more connected to the story and makes me feel like I'm picking up on things a little bit better. I'm remembering things a little bit better, even though my memory is terrible. And I don't know, I feel like I'm engaging with the story on a better level. Plus, if something does happen in the story and I think, oh yeah, there was a really big moment way back there that probably aligns with this. And if I want to find that moment, it's so much easier to find. Even if I didn't annotate that scene, I can still go back to the, the end of each chapter, which I will have tabbed if I'm tabbing, and I'll be able to actually look at these summaries and find really, really quickly where the scene is that I'm trying to find, which is so nice. This is probably the most time consuming part of my annotating, but it's become one of my favorite parts because it's just, it feels like, it feels like I'm really engaging with the story much, much more. I guess that's not true. I feel like I'm engaging with the story when I'm responding to it, but it feels like I'm comprehending the story on a deeper level when I'm taking the time to reflect and write back everything that I've learned in the chapters in bullet points. Quick, easy. Lastly, I've recently gotten into manga. I've started reading a lot more manga lately, and the way I annotate manga has become really fun. At first, I wasn't sure what I was going to do because I like writing directly on the page, and manga leaves far less room for that to be a possibility. So I've started using uh, sticky notes. So I love this because First of all, if you, watching this, feel uncomfortable with writing in books like I do, then you can use this method. You can write on a sticky note instead of on the page, and then you already have it tabbed up every time you write a note, which is just really nice. But I make my plain sticky notes my reactions, and then I make the bigger lined sticky notes my bullet points for the chapter. It means I still get to react to, respond, and be able to quickly find moments in the manga that have mattered to me. And I think it's really pretty at the end. I love a messy looking book. I think the messier, the prettier. If a book looks like it's been well read and well loved, I just, I think it has a special kind of beauty to it. And when a book is tabbed up, I, I look at it and I'm like, I loved that story. I really, I really engaged with and and that, that book mattered to me. Maybe it means I hated the book, but it looks like I loved it. Anyway, this is a little bit messy, but there's a kind of quick discussion on how I annotate and why I enjoy annotating. There are a few people, probably more people dislike this practice than like it, but there are a few people that have expressed to me that they'd like to get into annotating, but they don't know how or they're nervous to start. And I would say if you don't know how, the answer is me either, just do what you want. and. If you're nervous about it, just dive in. Pick out an old favorite or go buy something secondhand that you spent a dollar on so if it turns out you hate annotating, the stakes are low. I personally love it for a lot of reasons, um, but you know, it's not for everybody and it's cool if it's not for you. I'd love to continue chatting with you about this in the comments, so if you wanna keep discussing, please do. I post videos every Tuesday through Friday. I'll see you again soon.